Good morning everyone. Uh, this is just a short little live and we're going to be talking about how children are, with autism are often very overwhelmed at this time of year and just a couple of little hints that we can use to help them. So for those of you who are just at the start of your autism journey and you're still learning about the effects that uh, autism can have on your body, being overwhelmed can make you feel incredibly anxious. It's not like with a neurotypical child when you're a little bit overwhelmed you can just decide for yourself to go off and take a breather. Everything closes in really quick. We become very, very overwhelmed. We become is the insular, is that the word, when you sort of want to cuddle yourself. Um, Archie, when he was younger, used to get so scared uh, by what I would say to be silly things that he would actually vomit. And I was just touched by a little lady who um, put a, a, a message this morning to, to say that she was experiencing a similar thing. So although this video has been made with you in mind, you know who you are, um, it might be useful to other people as well. So those children with autism have usually, of course, and we know each child is different, but from our experience, are usually um, hypersensitive to things like lights and noise, um, or they're desensitized to things like lights and noise, but then we wake up one morning and all the neighbours have put their lights up or we go down the high street that's normally plain and there's suddenly flashing lights, music, um, big figures, which of course we love, don't we? It's great to see a Christmas tree on a roundabout covered in lights, but these are not usual things. They don't happen throughout the year. So these are massive changes in routine. We obviously can't cancel Christmas. We don't want to cancel Christmas, but it's those things that could possibly be triggering your child. Often as well, the stress levels, and I know this from myself, I have been incredibly stressed this last couple of weeks just because I've had a lot of things to organise. I've got a mini carol concert that I'm putting on. I'm looking after 17 members of the family on Christmas Day, which I love, don't get me wrong, but it's all overwhelming for me. That means I've been more, as a parent carer, more short-tempered and less patient. That also has an effect on our child. So I've gone on to Autism Unlimited. Um, as you know, I have a very close affiliation with uh, Autism Unlimited and, of course, the Dorset Children's Foundation, both fantastic resource um, places for you. And they've got some autism-friendly festive tips, um, so I'm just going to give them to you now. So one, uh, you can create a quiet space where you can take a break. This is for you to provide for your child. Or if your child is old enough, like Archie is old enough now, I can remind him, OK, you're overwhelmed. Quiet space. For him, that's the den that we've made in his room. Two, try and keep some aspects of your daily routine the same. So... This is a lot harder at Christmas because often you find a child with autism will be overwhelmed just by the sights and sounds. But what you could do is give them a Nintendo Switch. Other games are available to play in the car. Distraction. Not ideal. No one wants their kid to be on a device all the time, but needs must. And sometimes you've got to do it. That's OK. Three, if this is helpful, use a visual schedule and social stories to plan the day. This is a great one. If you go online on YouTube, there are lots of stories about Christmas that can just make Christmas seem more normal and every day for your child. If you Google social stories about Christmas, there are bound to be free downloads. If I get time this week, I'll try and create one myself, um, but I can't promise that. So um, I'm certain there'll be some online. For those of you who are... Um, already registered with Twinkle, which is the resource, make, uh, resource provider for schools, is fantastic for parent carers. Um, so they're bound to have someone there as well. And the last one that Autism Unlimited have suggested um, is consider an alternative Christmas dinner with preferred foods. Now, this is something that we do every single year and we always um, have comments about it, positive. Uh, so I need to put this tactfully. Not everyone agrees with the fact that my son is not forced to sit at the dinner table at Christmas. Christmas Day, I will ask Archie to join us for five, six minutes. 
he will sit down. I can guarantee you he won't eat a thing because there's too many people. He has eating issues. He won't want people to see him eating. And he probably won't like what we're eating because we're going to have something weird like pate and crackers. He doesn't do pate and crackers. We don't force him to eat Christmas dinner with us. And years ago when he was younger, we had had comments that, oh, it's Christmas. You should be with your child at Christmas. Actually, what we're doing is what's best for our child at Christmas. If he wants to join us, he'll join us. If he doesn't want to join us, it's his Christmas day too. And so I don't care if he wants to eat a ham sandwich in his bedroom on Christmas day, it's his Christmas too. And he can eat his Christmas dinner wherever and whatever he wants. And that's me being a supportive and inclusive parent. So please don't put yourself under the added pressure of feeling like you need to force your child to open presents at a certain time or, because again, that's massively overwhelming, isn't it? I get overwhelmed with that. The endless opening. I'm very grateful. Don't get me wrong. Of course I'm grateful. But it's very overwhelming. And also it can be awkward, can't it? Making sure you read the card, say thank you to the right person. You know, it's, it's hard going. Um, so yeah, I really hope you find that these tips are helpful to you. Um, like I say, if in doubt, go on to Autism Unlimited, go on to Dorset Children's Foundation, either of their websites, go on to Twinkle or Google, Social Stories for Christmas. And if in doubt, take a breath, spend the day doing nothing other than just being with your child and getting through the day. Because sometimes those days are like it and you can't do anything about it. And that sucks. But the next day is always a better day, right? Hope this is helpful. Bye, everyone.